Greg, firstly, you've named a 43-player squad for the upcoming Celtic Challenge campaign. Talk to us about that selection process. Yeah, it was a tough one. Like, selection's never easy. Uh, we've been monitoring players from uh, the AIL competition right through the Interpros. Um, staff have been on the ground, we've been at the games, we've lots of video footage, and we've gone with who we believe are, are 43 players that deserve a chance right now. There's a great blend. Uh, you know, there's seven teenagers in the group. We've got 19 players under the age of 22. Uh, some really good young talent. So there's one eye on the Celtic Challenge preparing for the Six Nations. But there's also, this is just a great opportunity for us as a staff to get our hands on some good young talent. Uh, the better players will come through and will appear in the Six Nations. I believe you found some gems. And players who, who don't uh, get to that level will have a really good plan about what they need to do to improve their game in order to get to that level. So we've seen something in them. Uh, in our DNA of what we're looking at and we're super excited. It's a new competition, the first year of it is just a super opportunity for so many young girls, as you say, who've impressed you in the AL and the Interpros to come in, work with the national coaching team and get that exposure in a cross-border competition. Yeah, well this year is, you know, we've had a really good funnel of players from 250 plus playing in the AIL through to, you know, 120 playing in the Interpro to 43 now in the Celtic Challenge. So the cream is rising to the top. Um, and to have the ability to not only train with these young athletes but also to get them now competing and seeing what they're like under pressure, seeing what they like, seeing what they're like around the group. We always talk about we always we want to select the, the player, the per, you know the person and the performance strategy. So it's an opportunity to test our skills under competition and you know we'll make lots of errors but we'll continue to learn and get better. You know, the pace of Six Nations we've seen now in the World Game, um, the semi-final of one of the World Cup games went to over 43 minutes ball and play. The final was over 38 minutes ball and play. So we need to be fit for purpose. And as Sung Tzu says, you've got to know the enemy, enemy like you know yourself. So we've got to be mentally and physically fit and ready to go come the Six Nations to be, to be competitive. The match development team first up on Sunday in Cardiff. What do you expect from them? They've obviously got one game under their belt winning last week. So what do you expect from that challenge? It's about ourselves. It's about putting our process in place now. Um, we, we've seen we've seen the footage from from the game last weekend between Wales and Scotland, and it was very good. You know, there's no doubt Wales have a very good mall. Uh, they move the ball well. They're they're well coached, and there's some really good Welsh players that we're going to see on the international stage very soon. So, I just think it's a super chance for our players and, and for an Irish team to go over representing the country and, and doing the best we can to play really good rugby that's fast, that's uh, intelligent uh, and again that's fit for purpose. You know, We've got to be very repeatable, we've got to go for worst case scenarios, long ball and play time and we've got to train to allow that to happen and it, it's going to be a journey and by the end of this five week period we're going to be very clear on where the players are. And some players will go on to playing Six Nations, but other players that don't, again, there'll be a very, very clear plan and what they'll need to do to become better, to become part of the plan moving forward.